So just moving right along into the next talk, this is diversity inclusion in digital reading reflections from the active online reading project, uh, Lincoln, a collaboration between Lincoln and Nottingham, Dr. Anna Rich Abad and Professor Jamie Wood. So take it away. Okay. So actually, Jamie is starting. <laughs> I'm starting. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Good. Um, yeah. So I'm I'm uh, Jamie Wood. I work at the University of Lincoln. We're both medieval historians, but we're not going to talk to you about medieval history today. Probably relieved. Um, yeah. So we'll get going with a, to tell you a little bit about our project. Um, so I'm going to do. Uh, Anna's going to do a brief introduction to the project, what it was, what we did. Um, in relation to the, the kind of conference theme, we're going to talk about some of the uh, what, what students and um, staff had to say around their, their perspectives on the challenges that they face when they have to read digital text in on, on online platforms or in online spaces. Um, then we'll do a bit of reflecting and then we'll have a bit of time for discussion. There'll also be an activity um, in the middle. Um, so over to Anna. Thank you. Okay, thank you everybody for being here today. And as Jamie says, I'm gonna introduce a little bit this project that we have been running for the last year, year and a half. It's called the Active Online Reading Project. And is a project that um, gathered um, scholars, um, academics from three different universities, basically Lincoln, Jamie, me, Nottingham, and another colleague from uh, UCL in London um, who can be here today. And um, we um, we came to this, I'm sorry, I forgot to say that there were also people from Sheffield Hallam University and Salford that uh, joined in, and we were assisted by Talis um, and by the QAA, who gave us funding for carrying on with the research. Um, we came to it with the thinking that, and it has been said already, that the students' reading practices have been uh, completely transformed over the last 20 years with digitalization of resources, emergence, and then ubiquity, this is Jamie's favorite word, of the virtual learning environment and the widespread of mobile devices. So the pandemic, and it has been mentioned before by Elizabeth as well, has accelerated such developments. And then we went into the rapid rollout of online and blended learning. And what happened is that all this was working, but we did know very little actually about how students did actually read online and how this uh, practice of reading online related to their overall understanding and their overall learning experience. Um, and we did have very little understanding of uh, what pedagogic strategies were effective in this situation. So we wanted to work on this. Um, we focused on the reading rich perspective of medieval studies and history in general. And, and then um, we came with a definition or a working definition of what we understood was active online reading. That is the practice of deep engagement with a text using techniques and annotating, responding, questioning, summarizing, and sharing. So that was important. Um, an example for us would be the reading in of an academic article and making notes on it uh, and sharing it with fellow students. There were a series of things that we were very interested in involving, and sorry, no, previous. No, I've done it. So we were very interested in um, working on what we understand was a community of practice in history initially, but that it would be broader, um, broadering to other disciplines as well. So for us as historians, it was very clear that um, reading was a, a, a very important thing in our discipline and that, that may um, create the specific situations that were specific for history or arts students. So we wanted to expand it to students in other areas as well that were not so heavily re reading focused. For example, uh, design and business studies. Um, we worked with also teachers in schools and uh, tried to gauge the idea of um, how does that work from going from school to later on uh, university. And, and then we wanted to, to, to work on this uh, sharing experiences and best practices. So that's the community of practice. 
And the other thing that we were very, very keen on uh, working is that we needed a student perspective for this. So we wanted to see how to teach well, we needed to see how they want to be teach, taught, sorry. So we engage student researchers in each one of the institutions and we engage them in collaborating in doing the research, not only answering questions, but also in producing their own reflective blogs and working on uh, the, the analysis of the data. So that, that leads us to the method. So that's what we did. We found out that reading and online reading was actually quite a lively uh, topic of conversation. And there were many people wanting to be engaged in discussing it and learning more about it and finding out techniques and resources. And we wanted to um, work on this in, and we did it in several forms. So one of them was to organizing workshops and we brought and gathered colleagues and uh, students to write reflective, reflective blogs. We did a literature review and we put on some uh, case studies to share. And we tried to develop, and we have tried to develop some pedagogic resources to um, share with everybody that is interested in this and that we will show you later about. And the main core of the uh, research was carried out through the conducting surveys uh, for staff and students. So we wanted to see what students wanted, but we needed to see how staff were willing to give it or what the staff we're thinking that we're already giving. Okay, passing to you. Cool. Um, yeah, so we, we did the survey. Um, we got responses from uh, 10 different countries, about 50 different institutions. Given our backgrounds and our networks and perhaps the sorts of people who are interested in reading a bit more, we got a kind of humanities heavy sample, um, about 100 staff. These are responses we could actually read. There were lots, we actually got several hundred more, but we had about 100 staff responses and about 450 from students. Um, and about 15% of the student responses um, self-reported as having some sort of disability that affected their, their, their ability to engage in reading uh, in digital spaces. Um, so I'm going to talk you through some of our um, responses. This is some of the, the things from the staff questionnaire. So there are three, three different uh, visuals here. We're going to start with the one in the top left-hand corner. How important is uh, online reading to students learning in your discipline? Unsurprisingly, given what we heard in the first presentation and common sense, um, really, really important was the overall uh, summary of that particular graphic. So academics or the 100 academics who responded to our survey think it's really important. Um, but the next question, the next response is the bottom uh, left hand corner. Um, how much attention do you actually devote to it? Some. It's really important and we devote some attention to it, but not a great deal, it seems, in their individual modules. Um, and then we asked, so how good do you think students are doing it? If it's really important, how good are students are doing this? They're not really very good at doing it. And we don't spend much time teaching them how to do it either. So there's clearly a series of disjunctions going on in what's happening when academics are that they're they're sort of like thinking about the importance of digital reading and then what they're actually trying to do or not do with the students. There's another disjunction between staff's ratings of how good students are at reading online, not very good, or you know, okay, but not not particularly great, and how students rate their their reading. Um, they're pretty confident. In general sort of like medium to, to confident if on the ratings that we looked at so again there's a clear disjunction there staff think students aren't particularly good students think they're pretty good so we need to think about that these sort of um these these divergences are some of the things that we're sort of like digging out through the process of the research um we asked students about their reading practices it won't surprise you to know that students you know don't read that much, um, self-report themselves as not reading a great deal. The happy news is in the bottom left-hand corner that they do read more as they go through their studies, <laughs> which is good. They're reporting that they read more as they go through. There is one PhD student who still reads for less than five hours a week, which is a bit worrying. Um, and I think this, in terms of the, the kind of um, the theme of the conference, the bottom right-hand visual is, is important because it's showing that students who report themselves as having a, it's not surprising, but students who report themselves as having a disability that affects their reading, 
read less than their, the average of their peers, the overall, the overall group um, who don't report having an ability. So they're already kind of at a disadvantage and they're engaging less with reading, um, which again is something I think we, we want to kind of dig into a little bit. Yep. Okay, so I'm gonna change the order of the slides. We couldn't do it um, yeah, earlier. So uh, having seen these discrepancies between um, students' perceptions and staff perceptions on, on the students' ability and effectiveness in reading practice, we would like to ask you, what is your perception as well? And uh, if you would not mind to scan this code and answer to the question is, how would you describe the effectiveness of students' academic reading practice as uh, positive, negative, or neutral, if your answers should, should show in the Menti, it, it worked earlier. We were getting the error message before and it did work. So don't let that put you off. Yeah, if it doesn't work, we'll do it with hands up, if that's okay. <laughs> so technology. <laughs> doesn't seem to be coming. Is it not coming? No. Okay, so is that all right? If, uh, how many people here more or less think that the effectiveness of the students is uh, positive? Somehow positive? Yeah? And not positive at all? Okay. So for the declarations are quite similar. Um, what what that, that means for us is that there is a discrepancy also um, in the fact that there are challenges that are not acknowledged probably in, in one way or another. And that, that was something that we asked actually uh, in the um, surveys that we conducted, we asked um, academics and students what were the challenges they thought were uh, important for them in their um, reading uh, practices. So again, so different responses um, marked uh, typical um, ideas or, mm, sorry, um, physical and personal uh, challenges, concentration, accessibility for students, the building up of confidence, um, you mentioned earlier that Anna we go into a, 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 a lecture and it's a daunting perspective to have to do these things. Um, physical challenges, visual strain, uh, postural problems. There are things that the staff also marked, and I'm, I'm saying these are the perspectives of the staff. Sorry, I didn't mention that. Um, one of the members of staff um, mentioned that there was a lack of quality control, like the web is a huge bewildering place and it's uh, home to good articles and dreadful unprofessional articles. How do we teach students or how do students navigate this if, if we don't help them because they don't have enough experience? So also the uh, approach, um, students assume that anything worth reading online will be immediately discoverable with Google. Um, so is Google a good reliable tool? How do we tell students that is not? And yet they keep doing it. So there's something that um, we detect that there are these problems, but they are not dealt with at root, some of these issues. Um, another problems that were highlighted by members of staff were that um, members of staff are not necessarily interested in developing digital skills or helping students to develop the digital skills. So it's not my job, especially academic staff. Um, so how do we deal with these situations? And, and these were lots of um, different barriers that we were detecting that were coming and were relating to issues with workload as well uh, by members of the staff or lack of communication between the different um, areas in the universities that could put uh, solutions and support the students, but they do it in separate ways and they don't talk to each other. That's the impression that it gave us. Uh, from a point of view of the uh, students, um, what were the challenges? Jamie will talk about this. Yeah, so the students, some of the things that the students outlined um, aligned really well with, you know, closely with what the, the staff were, were telling us. 
Um, one of the things that sort of surprised me a little bit um, was like there's a real focus on the physicality of digital reading and the student responses. Perhaps the most prevalent thing they talked about as a challenge was things like headaches, eye strain, backache, or different sorts of aches and pains that result from having to sit there and read, uh, you know, read digitally or read online. So that was kind of something that was a little bit surprising to me initially. Um, another thing that they talked about was um, linked to the so the, the staff talked a bit about like students can't uh, concentrate anymore, apparently, and this is apparently the fault of um, social media, but students also talked about this, like being distracted, having to figure out tactics that enabled them to to keep themselves focused on on the on the reading or the other kind of learning activities they were doing. So the, the pull of the wider Internet and all of its um, all of its kind of various interests was was one of the things they talked about. We heard about sort of. Um, digital problems of access around digital poverty that's something that students talked about as well um, uh, not not having sufficient bandwidth um, not having access to sufficient de no, devices that would enable them to 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 get online to 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 engage with these sorts of texts um, and that 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 pertained both to the UK students and to the international students as a sort of like link to the previous talk and one thing they also um discussed quite frequently was the um how there are millions of platforms for reading online like there's different v there's the vle then there are different platforms there's the PD pdfs but then there are different platforms by which you access different types of um different types of text that you might be expected to engage in and this kind of like proliferation of different di different ways of accessing online reading was something that I mean, I think does their head in because it does my head in <laughs> when I'm trying to do research and trying to access these uh, these readings. So that was something that, that students talked about. Um, we asked students about one thing that they changed their um, about their reading practices. Um, the top response was that I wish I'd done more reading was one thing. So I think one of the things to consider is how can we help students to build the habits of, of reading? Um, um, and, and lots of things related to their kind of the, the, the nitty gritty of accessing texts, of engaging with them, of thinking critically about them. Um, we came up with a number of recommendations, um, including um, that we don't, academics shouldn't, we think it's not pr productive for academics to absolve themselves of responsibility for delivering this at the same time as complaining about students not being able to do it. Seems to me that that's not, not a very productive way of proceeding. Um, we think that um, thinking about um, how digital reading specifically might be something that students need to learn or need to learn skills that, that, that will help them in digital reading alongside kind of analog reading would be helpful. Note taking was an issue that came up a lot. And I know that is, that is available in lots of places, but students don't always know how to access it. They re students tended to like the idea of collaborative reading. So getting to sort of share their ideas, um, annotate things together was something that they liked. Um, they thought open access and the, the widespread digitization, digitization of resources was a really good thing. So, so more of that was viewed to be positive. Um, alternative ways of accessing things like read aloud, audio books, those sorts of things were, were viewed positively too. Um, and, and providing just like hints and tips, how to avoid being distracted. Some of the students we talked to had some really great ideas about how to do this, but they'd sort of figured this out on their own rather than it being something that was a bit more systematized. Yeah, we also made a bunch of resources uh, of help sheets which you're welcome to access and there'll be another QR code on the final slide so you can, you can get back to them. And Anna's going to conclude because we're running out of time. Yeah, just a minute for the conclusions if that's okay. So basically the and conclusion is that um, the students come up with challenges that are fully acknowledged by the staff, but that um, supporting students to engage in reading digital text in online spaces is not a priority for academics. And that it's open is often left to support departments and students are left to communicate separately from the communication that they have with academics with those departments. So there's no communication between one thing and the other. Um, 
and then any inductions or any skills based modules or teaching that is done to students seems to be disjointed from any other kind of learning into their experience. Um, it also seems that technology is applied randomly and some academics may engage because they want to, we do, but others don't. And then the experience on digital uh, learning for students is also very irregular. Um, so we, we don't have a solution, we have some ideas, and um, we, we understand that this is also a challenge for institutions and for academics to try to integrate digital teaching in our practice. So that's it. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think I think with both the people who are likely to respond to this survey were academics who, well, you know, who, who, yeah, well, who complain, but I also think that, you know, we were, we were using our own networks, we were, we were disseminating it widely, but we we're also using our own networks, so we were, we were connecting with people who are a bit like us, and therefore, so I, th I think we were probably getting people who are um, interested in this topic in general, but we also got some, like, quite shocking responses that I was like, why did you, you know, it's really interesting that the ones that kind of um, go against the grain, the, the, the ones where, like the, the Anna was saying, it's totally not my responsibility. It's the student's responsibility. It's up to them to skill themselves, upskill themselves, or it's up to the library and other, other service departments to, to upskill the students. So there's a kind of, there's definitely something around the, the sort of sample that we, that we got. Um, yeah, so I, th I think, and we probably got keen students who responded, but I think that's, that's going to be the challenge with any sort of survey like this that you're going to get students who are kind of interested so that we probably are getting a, a bigger divergence um, than we than we otherwise would certainly in the student student response i think um, i think you had your hand up oh, i didn't see that <laughs> one of you can ask a question is this I had a daughter at the university doing a history degree, obviously, with loads of reading in her. It's a very academic course, but I am struck by how little reading she does. And I kind of sort of wonder why that is. You know, she's like a top A star student. So she's not quite underachieved, overachieving in my you know, sort of view. But it's, I just wonder if just schools have just got better at showing students how to focus in on what they need to read to pass assignments and to do work. I don't know, I mean, it's just, it's just my view about having, you know, the daughter who's, you know, a, a, a top course student, you know, very academic subjects, but striking I, like Yeah, I'm struggling to kind of summarise this, but so it's around like, like the like why do student why are students perhaps not being asked to read very much and and and, and those I, I mean i do there is definitely um one of the things we we definitely think needs addressing is the um the, the transition that the student the expectations of student at university are uh, about reading are very different to what they're expected to do at school at school for history which is the subject i know most about and I don't know very much about it it's it's these very very focused kind of not reading very much at all whereas at, when they come to university we're trying to gradually get them to read more more widely more independently more cr critically so you've got that kind of how do we get them to to, be, to become more independent um, and again it, I think what the tendency amongst some of the respondents to the survey and me just talking to colleagues is to see well it's the fault of the school but the Teachers at school are teaching students for a different purpose to what we're trying to teach them at university. So 
we want we think it would be really important to do more sort of intelligence sharing around what you know what you know we don't really know what the gap is because we don't we don't have any clue about what's going on at school really um, but then that has an impact upon what we do it what we're trying to do with them when they come into a history degree or any other degree so there's a real sort of problem with with think like mindset thinking about students as being in, in deficit all the time isn't helpful in terms of developing them in, in this area or in any other area really can i go on this one as yeah. well so we oh sorry <laughs> we um we have different practices in different institutions but we give minimums to students to read and but we don't give them maximums so that's another thing so and linking with what jamie was saying it's a matter of transition so we give them a minimum in which they have to engage deeply during a course of one week or two weeks where they discuss this with pairs and with this, the, the, the tutor or the lecturer in the class um, environment, but they have ex extra material and they can develop and advance on that um, as they feel they are able to do it. We encourage them to go a little bit beyond what they are giving us a set reading for the week. Okay, so that's um that's the thing but it's about this transition thing that is worrying is that not everybody evolves at the same pace and there there is also the fact that the students have been drilled in a system sometimes in which do this this is what you have to do no we tell them go and explore but the level of exploration of somebody has been in, in a very strict system so far is sometimes a bit daunting and and then that is also transitional problem so to give students a bit the wings. We're going to take one more question, but before we do that, sorry, I saw your hand first. We can maybe take one more. ADHD, doctoral student structure, signposting really helps. You're using TALIS. So if anyone uses reading list, you have to say what's recommended, what's essential. Otherwise, someone like me, we might read all the things. Yeah. And we will go down rabbit holes because it's interesting and we might use it later, but we might not. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, there are a proliferation of tools. There was an article in THE recently, which was trying to say that people who have ADHD are gonna suffer from that. The community of practice at, of about neurodivergency at Glasgow, we responded very strongly to that with our own THE article, because there's actually a lot of good digital tools which will help us. Mm -hmm um that person had no lived experience they have dyslexia which is different yes and it seems to be a risk factor, particularly people keep hearing more and more people are reading, of course. Um, but I wonder whether the digital media landscape is distracting from reading. But whether they've read it, they will say how much they've enjoyed it. And actually, so I wonder whether that is really asking students to read it and hopefully they're preventing it with maybe another way of seeing it. Yeah, excellent question. This is about um, how little exposure to actual reading students have before university sometimes. And when they engage with reading at university, they, they end up saying, oh, it's enjoyable, isn't it? Yeah, I think I think this this is something um, I can relate very well. My daughter is just past A levels doing sciences and it's been through YouTube. So <laughs> I'm a bit like, well, and she's she's somebody who reads so this experience of reading we we might understand now that reading has many other different word, forms than the book as we know it in the past uh, the problem is for me a little bit more the depth that they achieve in reading and when they focus normally with tools like talis elevate and then they can annotate together and, come and share or 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 highlight in a physical book, then they get a little bit more of that and they end up enjoying it. I have students now coming with sets of different colors of highlighters and they love doing that. So, and, and it, it's, not, it, it's not just a frivolous thing, it's a way of doing it effectively for them and understanding how to highlight 
and prioritize what is important in, in the text. So I think that we have to think about reading in a more visual way that we 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 did in the past or in, in that in that matter in that matter. Do you want to ask your question, Elizabeth? Uh, thank you both ever so much. I find this incredibly fascinating, um, having been a librarian in a previous life. Um, but what I wanted to ask, you said that Talis um, has been involved in this research, so or is a supporter of it. What are they looking to get out of your findings? What what were they what are they planning on doing? <laughs> um, well, that's a good question. I mean, I think they, they they funded it, so we've spoken at some events that they've done, but we have we haven't been, you know, plugging their product really. It's been more um, uh, interest in sort of like, well, they're interested in how students learn and how, you know, what impact the 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 ways in which we or other people might be using the tool might have on um, on student learning. So so that I mean. So there's a kind of virtuous connection in that that regard. Um, we we have been working with other other companies and other um, like a range of different institutions. Um, and we weren't, you know, when we did the survey, we weren't asking students specifically anything about Talis, Elevate, or any other product for any any other company. It was it was a kind of general open, um, much more of an open type of survey. I guess what I was interested in is, you know, are they looking at maybe um putting some guidance within their system to help students look at how they might approach well no i think i think no, it's not not just companies like talis it's it's a lot of different com um groups that are promote um developing um e-reading platforms and also kind of different types of you know um yeah, do, so your documents and approaches that they are looking for different ways in which you can you can structure the reading for the students through the use of AI to generate questions um, through stuff that um, instructors can insert into text to to guide students through the reading process. Um, ways in which students can kind of collaborate with each other around reading, and there, I mean it's yeah the proliferation of of different platforms and different modes of engagement is also means they're all trying different things so it's kind of interesting to see that there are these different different approaches being taken okay thanks very much jamie and anna it is now lunchtime unless you have further questions which you would like to ask the presenters um thank you very much